All right. Verse 1, starting at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Most people stop right there. They stop reading. They stop quoting that right there. Let's read the whole verse. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Isn't that something? This is this is me talking now. You know how the, the thing that your mind is on, you think on it long enough, the temptation grows stronger. The pull gets harder. It has a harder pull on you. Woo! Yeah, that's why you got to renew your mind. Wow. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. Now, what happens? This is me talking. What happens when you're carnally minded? You get confronted by some poop butt in the store, at the bank, in line, in a car. Road rage. Some dingbat out there wants to go crazy on the road, and, and they want you to join their party. You going to join? You don't know them. You going to join? Because they made you mad because they gave you the finger and insulted you? You're going to join, huh? Why? If you feel so compelled to do so, that's a serious temperature gauge that tells you you are still dwelling in the flesh. Mm, caught up in it. Controlled by it. See, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is self is one of them, is self-control. The Bible calls it temperance. And if you can't maintain your cool when somebody else is acting a fool, uh-oh, not good. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because what happens is you... When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a new nature working. That new nature is now removing, helping you to remove that old nature. Your old nature is the flesh. Your old nature is your nasty attitude. Your old nature are your old ways, your old habits, your old words and style of communication, potty mouth, fist fighting, acting a fool on the road, going tit for tat. You call me a fool, I call you a fool. Let's deal with it. Let's tangle. You are so easily distracted and deterred, like a child with a short attention span. You get the child working on a little project, some other little dingling comes along, just show and show and show, and the kid like, tick, 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 off to the races. Forgot totally what they're doing. Many of you as adults do the same thing in the spirit realm. Getting ready to pray. I've done it. 
getting ready to pray, some pop-up that, I mean, you know how these advertisements follow you around. And I'm looking, it catches my eye. Oh yeah, I gotta check that out. But anyway, I'm trying to get on with what I'm doing and before I know it, I'm clicking. Like, okay, click that. That can wait. It's easy to be distracted. It's easy to, to have your attention taken off, your focus taken off. Let me tell you what happened one time. This, this will uh, explain to you what I mean. Sometimes it has nothing to do with sin. My husband and I were in the bedroom. That's his bedroom right here. We were in his bedroom. He was in the hospital bed. Hospice hadn't come by until late that night. So it was him and me that afternoon. We got into this thing. He was dying. That was during like two weeks before he passed away. And he was still able to talk. Share with you how sly the devil is. We missed, I, I missed, I allowed myself to miss a beautiful moment with him. We sat there and we were, my husband called me over to the, closer to the bed to give him a hug. And he started crying and he said, baby, I love you. I love you. I love you. We were so into this beautiful moment and I'm telling him how much of a wonderful man he's been and how I learned so much and I've grown because of him and I love everything about him and I so appreciate him being my husband and I love him more than I loved anybody else in my life and we're just basking in this love fest. Ring, ring, ring. And I'm thinking, don't interrupt this. This is too precious. Ring, ring, ring. And then, of course, reasoning comes in. Well, it might be his family members, his son, his this, his that. Okay, you pick it up. Hello? Some woman we don't even know. We talked to her once in the past. I call to encourage your husband. Me like a dum-dum instead of saying, can you call back in two hours? I hand him the phone. And she's just yelling all in his ear. Oh, in the name of Jesus, y'all got on there. Oh, in the name of da, da, da. And I could tell he was getting tired and, and annoyed. And I said, I took the phone from him. I said, I said, you want me to end this? He said, yeah. So I took the phone. I said, babe, I'm sorry. He's really tired. But guess what? We didn't get back to our moment, our fest. That who knows what could have been said, what could have been done, what could have happened at that moment. This wasn't a sin. The phone call was not a sin. She was talking godly stuff. But it wasn't the time. And I allowed it to interrupt. That's why we have to be very in tune. If I had been more in tune with the Holy Spirit, I would have turned that ringer off. And my husband and I would have continued. Who knows what we could have shared during that time. You never know what you missed out on when you keep allowing life to interrupt every precious moment. Many of you live by your cell phones. God can't get a word in edgewise because your cell phone is your idol. As soon as that phone lights up, talk to the hand, Lord. I got to deal with my cell phone. This is important. Please. See, life. Life is to be orchestrated by God. Life is not to orchestrate God out of the picture. We get that backwards. So that's why we have to make sure we're living in the spirit. Because even those of us who are filled with the Spirit, living a holy life, still make those horrible mistakes of allowing things of the flesh, distractions of the enemy, to infiltrate precious moments. You could be getting ready to experience God himself and the phone will ring. <laughs> Be surprised how many experiences we all miss out on because we allowed life 
to interrupt what we had going. Okay, so all I can say is whatever you do, be led by the Spirit of God. Many are, you know, it says, therefore now there's no condemnation. Of course there's no condemnation when you're living in the Spirit and you're walking after the Spirit and you're denying the flesh. But, but, there are times we don't deny the flesh and we end up feeling condemned. Don't let Satan jerk you around like that. One of our brothers on, in our church, Rashad, said all week he rebuked, rebuked, and rebuked. And every time he rebuked, thought went away, desire went away, anger went away, attitude, whatever. All the little temptations of yielding to the flesh, poof, like a puff of smoke, gone. Because he took authority. Hello. I want you to do the same. Remember to take authority. Remember to present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable service. Least you can do. God bless you.